In this video, I'd like to revisit the venerable noob tube and share with you some new ideas and concepts that might make it a more enjoyable plane. This is a design I came up with about four years ago uh, to introduce new foam board builders with the ease of creating the uh, true airfoil arm and wing, the folded tubular fuselage, and some simple control surface designs in the most basic configuration uh, and the minimal amount of electronics and structural components and expense, uh, but I failed at the time to take into account that noob builders are often also noob flyers. And so with a very short wingspan, and particularly with the aggressive ailerons that I like to use, uh, this turns out to be a bit of a speed demon, a little bit hard to handle, especially in roll and with a relatively high wing loading. Uh, it can land pretty fast and things kind of happen faster than they want to. So I've had many requests over the years to make some improvements and one of those is dihedral. So in its basic form, the noob tube has an exactly 30 inch wingspan. That's one piece of a ready board, Dollar Tree foam board, folded over into an arm and wing. A 30 inch uh, fuselage tube plus a couple of inches for the power plant um, plus the length of the ele elevator here. So about uh, 34 inches long and a Vertical stabilizer about 15% of the total wing surface area and horizontal stabilizer about 25% of the total wing surface area. And it flies quite well. It's, it's very quick, very nimble. Again, rolls very quickly, uh, but can be a bit of a handful to fly. My preferred method of attaching the wing on this and just about all the planes that I build now is with rubber bands. And as you'll see with the additional wing designs uh, that I'll show you, uh, this will permit you to switch between the wings or perhaps work with the, er, the easiest version first and then work up to the short wing span if you really want to fly around. And this is accomplished just by using pieces of a three millimeter carbon fiber two, or rod right here and right here, or barbecue skewers would probably work fine, or chopsticks. And this is, uh, extends from about half an inch forward of the rear edge of the hatch back to about an inch behind these two small rectangular holes cut. Uh, through which pass these rubber bands and they remain captive with the plane, uh, but they can be swapped out by just simply pulling out the, the rod, uh, replacing some new rubber bands in there and placing that back in. Um, this makes good use of the hatch entry point also if you did have the aileron equipped noob tube as the aileron servo leads would protrude from here down into your um, control electronics cavity right here where the receiver is. This is the true dihedral uh, noob tube equipped with a 40 inch wingspan. So that's two sections of 20 inches each, and this can be made longer to a point. I probably wouldn't exceed 30 inches, partly because of the, uh, you're not lengthening your tail for yaw stability, and also the forces applied to the joint at the point of a 60 inch wingspan uh, require proper spar like a carbon fiber or a dowel. Uh, but with this version, I've accomplished 13 degrees of dihedral, I actually measure the joiner at 15 degrees, but it, it came up as 13 when measured. And this is attached to the uh, fuselage in the same means with small standoff rails underneath to compensate for the angle uh, underneath the, the wing joint here where the wing roots come together and this has no ailerons at all so with this plane you are definitely committed to flying a uh, three channel using the rudder uh, for uh, directional control and the elevator for pitch and your throttle of course for power uh, this plane will not roll over when you uh, apply a prolonged yaw input, it will actually go into a spin. This is the true dihedral version, which is uh, 40 inches in wingspan, comprised of two 20 inch sections of arm and wing with a seven inch cord, uh, which gives a pleasing aspect ratio and good flight characteristics. It can be made slightly larger or smaller, given your preference. Of course, there are no ailerons. And this cord happens to emulate that of a standard noob tube wing with a five inch airfoil cord and a two inch uh, fairly large aileron but the same cord there, so it's somewhat familiar in that respect. It is finished in the rear with the kissing tape technique, which is two pieces of vinyl um, colored packing tape, one here, one here, and the adhesive joined very carefully right along the, the edge uh, using a, a flat surface and a gift card like that just to push it down. Uh, any other method would work fine with vinyl tape, packing tape simply wrapped around, or a bead of hot glue or CA glue. Just make sure there's no exposed foam board here or really anywhere in your plane if you're flying anywhere near moisture. I've dressed the ends of this wing with some vinyl uh, pack or vinyl tape here and the magic happens at the wing joint where there is a 15 degree angle of dihedral and with this wingspan uh, that should be pretty adequate and of course in the absence of aileron. So this is not just for stability dihedral, this is for turning authority dihedral with a, a three channel radio just using the rudder. 
And I've accomplished this wing joint by using popsicle sticks, you see here, uh, glued together with CA glue in the correct angle. Here's what those spar joiners look like. Um, now actually, just one set of popsicle sticks, CA glued here, is actually quite incredibly strong. I'm going to try and break it right now. I can't, I can't break it. It's actually going to, it broke on the wood instead of the glue. But in any case, um, that would probably be sufficient. The only problem I found is by introducing uh, just a single popsicle stick inside the wings, it tended to flop around as the glue was curing. Um, so by adding some width to that, it added not only strength, but some stability and hold it in place. And so in this version, I have placed two of those assemblies in, one forward of and one rear of the vertically oriented flight test style spar, which should be perfectly adequately strong for this particular plane. I've used Gorilla Glue, I'm moistening the sticks, applying glue, placing in place, and a couple little chunks of foam board here and here just to hold those together against the spar while the glue cured. And then the procedure will be uh, repeated in the opposite wing with uh, Gorilla Glue, hot glue, CA glue, whatever your preference, and join together like that. Now the upper uh, wing root on this wing, I've trimmed back 15 degrees from the vertical plane. You could actually trim back seven and a half degrees from each of these, but as it turns out, just trimming one within a really with decent tolerance, it actually comes together pretty nicely without much of a gap. And I plan on taping over this anyway. Also recommended to tape the bottom part, perhaps with extreme uh, packing tape, uh, just to provide a little bit more uh, tensional strength. And because of this uh, presentation of the lower surface of the wing is no longer flat to engage the fuselage, we need to provide some standoff rails like this. These are actually thicker than they need to be. It's one thickness of foam board, it's just a scrap. It's just pre-covered with uh, packing tape and two-sided foam tape. Half of this thickness would be more than enough to clear this. But nonetheless, there are no connections for servos or any other uh, items. And this can just be rubber banded to the uh, three channel plane and flown. Now, if you've already got a noob tube built or you predict one day you may want to fly the default version like this, the simplest way to accomplish dihedral and the benefits and stability that it has and also the ability to operate with just the rudder, that's so-called three channel operation with throttle, elevator, and rudder, is to just add wingtip polyhedral panels like this, which can be made out of flat foam board. Uh, this is not an airfoil, although it could be made, but it's very light, simple to um, slam together in about 10 minutes and attach it to the end of the wings in a way I'll show you in just a moment. They can be swept or straight, and they can add potentially a significant amount of wingspan, which of course will increase the wing area, lower the wing loading, and come up with a much slower plane, as you'll see in the example I'll show flying a little bit later. And here's the polyhedral conversion idea, which uses a normal uh, standard noob tube wing with or without ailerons in place, and adds to that a polyhedral panel. That polyhedral panel can be swept, like this one, which is mostly for aesthetics, has a slight structural advantage as it um, places more of the, the stress uh, further back on the root of this. Uh, or it can be just a straight slab, just like this one. And then that is uh, taped in that angle, supported with a gift card here. And those can be removed if you ever wish to revert to flying just the short wing uh, aileron equipped noob tube without dihedral or polyhedral. By adding the wingtip polyhedral panels uh, to a straight arm and wing, uh, this is what you'd get. So the basic way to execute that polyhedral is to have your uh, arm and wing like this and your polyhedral panels, which can be tape pre-covered with or without the edges finished. Heck, you could only even use a piece of uncovered foam board if you just wanted to try it out. And uh, rotate your airfoil over and using, I like to recommend Scotch Extreme Packing Tape because it does not stretch at all. It's very strong. Not that it needs to be strong, but not stretching is advantageous in this application. Uh, put a piece of it at least two thirds of the cord of your wing, preferably the whole thing. Uh, but for expediency, I'll just show you a short piece. And then take your polyhedral panel, which ideally should be the same cord as your airfoil itself, and just place that down flat and even with it like this. These can be tapered, as you've seen in my example, but in any case, the taper should uh, not be so as extreme as it shifts the center of pressure rear in the 
uh, relative to the center of gravity. Otherwise, uh, be sure to adjust your center of gravity accordingly. Uh, but in this straight example I'm showing here, I've taped it down. And then you'll notice that it does permit some upward motion of the polyhedral panel with a nice amount of tension against that tape. So with that now taped, you'll need to create the amount of polyhedral that you wish to impart in that panel by taking a gift card or ID card like this and bending it in the middle up to the desired angle. And this may take some experimentation. It's not critical that these be perfect, whereas it is important that the uh, polyhedral between the two wings is symmetrical. So I like to use 3M uh, Extreme Mounting Tape. This can be gotten at Home Depot or other big box stores. It's fairly inexpensive, very strong and versatile. And place a strip here and a strip here. And then this part is important because you want symmetry between your polyhedral panels, left and right wing tips to be equal. So take some fixed objects, I'll just use this roll of tape, and place it under the uh, tip at the same uh, location on the tip and the same thickness as your object to accomplish that uh, 20 or so degree uh, bend. Now we'll place the, uh, stru the structural member here just aft of the maximum point of camber seems to work well. It's a little tough to get this to curve and conform precisely, although you can experiment with this, but I've had the easiest success with just placing it just rear of the maximum point of camber there. And then uh, by bending this up, or down rather, uh, to your polyhedral panel. It will fix it like that, and you'll be surprised really how strong this is. Now it is pretty unsightly, admittedly. If you went with this configuration, you may wish to tape over this or come up with a more elegant design, uh, but the advantage of this is this can be removed uh, if you wanted to revert to the uh, prior configuration of the uh, wing that you're flying. You just take off the polyhedral panels Easier said than done, like that, and then you'll be left with your regular wing. Incidentally, another easy way to get off two-sided foam tape from pre-covered foam board, or also hot glue for that matter, uh, is to use a source of extreme cold and using dust off held upside down and liberally covering uh, the surfaces which are taped together and a little under the tape itself, avoiding your skin. This is very cold. And let that chill, and that makes the adhesive very brittle so that uh, the tape just comes right back off. And if the tape is kept clean on that surface, uh, it can actually be reapplied to another warm surface right away. All of the turns you see me making here are done exclusively with the rudder. If you've ever flown a usual noob tube, you'll recognize that this version with the polyhedral flies a lot slower. 